some people will be looking at what happened yesterday and thinking, the Prime Minister brought a deal back, so why do we need another extension? I didn't vote for an extension. What I voted for was an insurance policy. All I did was support Oliver Letwin's amendment because I want to make sure that we leave with a deal, not no deal, which is what the original intent of the Benn Act was. And all this does is try to protect that initiative. So I support the Prime Minister's deal and I have told him I will support it next week. I understand people's fatigue. Let me tell you, I suffer from it myself. But we have to make sure that we don't leave with no deal. The Prime Minister's got this deal. He thought, I mean, at one point he said he didn't think he could get a deal with the EU unless he had no deal as a threat. But in fact, the Ben Act removed no deal as a threat and he got this deal. And I want to support it and I will. And I think not all of us, but most of us from the conser former, conservative, former Conservatives who supported the Let Win Amendment will do so as well. Interesting to hear that you will be supporting um, yeah. the deal when it comes back. And I week. have told the Prime Minister that. And, I, you know, it's quite possible we will still leave by October the 31st. But I I think it's absolutely right to say we don't want to leave with no deal, but we do want to leave with a deal. And this deal from the Prime Minister is good enough for me. If you say you need an insurance policy against no deal, who is it that you don't trust? Do you not trust the Prime Minister or do you not trust some of your former colleagues any on the group Conservative of benches? MPs, any group of MPs could bring an amendment and try and get a coalition around it so that it could stop it moving forward, the legislation that we need to actually leave. And if you just have the threat of no deal hanging over, then it won't allow us to be able to debate them or spend time trying to win over the argument. And that could just allow us to trip over once more into no deal. The Prime Minister has got us a deal and I have congratulated him for that. The whole purpose of this amendment is not to try and have a delay, but to try and make sure that we don't leave without a deal. So it's the European Research Group, effectively. The it's not just them, no. It could, be, it could be a group of Labour MPs. It could it's be any more group unlikely of MPs. Though, isn't it? It's a very fragile coalition to support the Prime Minister's deal. And can I say something else? I regret very much the fact that the Prime Minister did not allow us to vote on his deal after the Letwin Amendment. I had expected to. I was going to support it. And I think he would have seen then that he has a fragile but sincere coalition of people who want to support it. But the reason that they didn't bring that forward was because of the Letwin Amendment. I mean, it deleted a lot of the, most of the things that made the vote meaningful, didn't it? Did it did one thing, which is it said that we can only leave with a deal, which is what the Ben Act had already said. It said we couldn't negate the Ben Act until we had had the legislation through in support of his deal. It's a very reasonable proposal, and I wish that afterwards we'd been able to show our support for the actual proposal the Prime Minister has brought forward. I just wonder if people looking at what happened in Parliament yesterday will be thinking that actually this is all about MPs trying to thwart Brexit. It's not about getting a deal, it's not about ruling out no deal, it's about more delay, it's about staying in purgatory longer. I know that that is the spin that is being put out by people who say, just get it done. But this is such an important event, getting this treaty right. I don't think it is unreasonable to allow MPs to look at it. We haven't even seen the legislation yet. You know, as Justin Greening pointed out very wisely yesterday, the annual budget is scrutinised for months. Now, this is something which is going to be permanent for the UK. It's not unreasonable that MPs take their responsibilities seriously. We're not a rubber stamp organisation and look carefully at the legislation as it goes through. Well, let's talk about uh, the what's on the table, shall we? Do yeah. you think this is a deal that's better or worse than the one that Theresa May negotiated? I don't think it's as good as Theresa May's deal. Um, I regret the fact that we don't have effectively a backstop for the whole of the country. Instead, it's only Northern Ireland that has not a backstop, but as some people put it, a front stop. That border is going to be open, and as several uh, supporters of the bill have said, it's a great deal for Northern Ireland, apart from the union element. Which is so, quite a big element. Which to be is honest, a big element, but it? in it's terms good. of the economy, it's very good for Northern Ireland. It's less good uh, for the rest of the union. So I thought that Theresa May's deal was the right deal. I think this is not as good, but I will, I will nevertheless support it. My biggest concern about it is about the union, and you know the major parties from Scotland and from Northern Ireland both heavily oppose it. I think that's a problem. But nevertheless, I think that we should go ahead with it. We've got to win the argument and we've got to make sure that we move on from here. That I do agree with. I mean, you can see that the DUP have had some quite consistent red lines they throughout have. this yeah. uh, on protecting the union. They feel that this undermines it. Yeah. 
Um, are you worried about their concerns? Has Boris Johnson sold out his former allies? I am worried about their concerns. I think anybody who describes themselves as a Conservative and Unionist will be worried about their concerns. But the Prime Minister has shown uh, great flexibility and he's decided to prioritise getting this deal done. There is more work to do to try and reassure the DUP and I'm not sure that we will be able to achieve that. Mm -hmm. um, I just wonder as well, uh, you're talking about the threat of no deal. One thing that struck me from the events over the last few days were comments made by John Barron, a Conservative MP, uh, who says he can vote for the deal because it leaves open, in his mind, the prospect of a no deal next year. Um, Philip Hammond, on Friday, uh, one of your uh, colleagues, haven't come this far seeking to avoid no deal in 2019 to be duped into voting for a heavily camouflaged no deal at the end of 2020. Yes, being I, duped? Uh, no, I, I don't think we're being duped. I think that most of us are looking at it uh, with, a, with a certain amount of realism. Um, this is a start to the Brexit process to a large degree. The idea that it's all done when this deal goes through is completely wrong. There's a lot more to negotiate and do. But I think actually that the Prime Minister has shown that he's willing to have a closer relationship with the European Union than he might have telegraphed during some of his campaigning previously. And I take great comfort from Wh that. Why do you say that? Because many people will look at this deal and the concern that they will have is that they will see a looser relationship with the EU being proposed than that under Theresa May. Well, it is looser. I mean, that's what John McDonnell was saying It is earlier. looser than under Theresa May, but it is not as loose as WTO or the sort of stuff that Nigel Farage wants. It is indeed a compromise, which is why I support it. I would like to see the regulatory alliance, the regulatory alignment element in the withdrawal agreement, as it had been under Theresa May, making sure that goods are regulated in the same way across the EU and across the UK. So but how much do you think that. it will hurt the economy then if this deal does go Well, our own, a government's own assessments are that it will hurt the economy, I think, by 4 to 6% a year. So it's serious stuff. But I still think that it's the right thing to do because we had the referendum in 2016 and there's other steps we can take to try and mitigate that. I'm not a huge enthusiasm, enthusiast for Brexit, but I do believe that we have, a, as somebody who campaigned very hard in 2016 to remain, I'm very conscious of the fact that the public voted to leave and I want to help achieve that. Every move I've done since then has been to try to do that. And I do point out to some of our critics, those of us who voted for the amendment, that many of us have voted to leave the European Union more times than the Prime Minister has. It's pretty clear that you will back the deal, even though you have reservations about it. Yes. What happens next week could, could really come down to the former Conservative rebels, the, the MPs who were stripped of the Conservative Party whip. How do you think, how many do you think will support the deal? I think that um, it, you can probably see quite clearly, if you look at the people who supported the amendment, that there are many of us, myself, um, Oliver Letwin himself and a few others, who have said that they just want to make sure that the threat of no deal is removed. They will support the Prime Minister's deal. There are a few others who have taken a different view, but I think there is a coalition for getting the Prime Minister's deal through. I'd also do you point think, out, So you think it will get through? I do think it will get through. I also point out there are several Labour MPs who have said they will support the Prime Minister's legislation now because the amendment got through. So some of us who supported it, although I know everybody makes their own case for their own moves, will, would say that it helps the legislation get through because it protects that coalition. Now, when you resigned from Boris Johnson's uh, cabinet, I just want to have a little look at what you said in your letter to him. We think we can have a little look now. Uh, you said, I no longer <coughs> believe leaving with a deal is the government's main objective. The government is expending a lot of energy to prepare for no deal, but I have not seen the same level of intensity go into our talks with the European Union. Yeah. Well, he's come back with a deal. In a breakneck speed that many people thought was impossible. Should you now be apologising to the Prime Minister? No, I have congratulated the Prime Minister, but I do think the Prime Minister has surprised many of us by breaking what were a number of his red lines before, and the response from the DUP has really been the evidence for that. The fact that they still want the government to leave no deal on the table and rush through this legislation over the next 10 days really confirms what I've said there is that. There's so much effort into preparation for no deal. Where is the work not only in, going, in getting the deal, but in selling the deal to the House of Commons? But he has got the deal. He I mean, has got a deal. And I, as I say, I congratulate him on getting the deal. We've been in touch, but um, only, only by text. What, what, what was the text? Well, I think I'm fair, fair to say the text messages are private, but they are very constructive. Listen, the Prime Minister is familiar with the route of resigning over a point of principle from Cabinet. I think that we all know he did it once himself.
So do you hope that there may be a route back to the Conservative Party whip if, for voting for the deal? Possibly, but um, Sophie, like many of my colleagues, I am very much prioritising what I believe is best for the country, not necessarily best for the party. But you would rotate the whip if it was offered? Well, I surrender the whip voluntarily, so I think it's a, a different process for me, but I'm doing what I believe is right for the country and in the national interest. And at the next election, where are you planning to stand? I'm still thinking about it. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but um, rest assured I'll let you know.